the story of Dr. Kildare. Whatsoever house I enter, there will I go for the benefit of the sick. And whatsoever things I see or hear concerning the life of men, I will keep silence thereon, counting such things to be held as sacred trusts. I will exercise my art solely for the cure. The story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. Metro Goldwyn Mayer brought you those famous motion pictures. Now this exciting, heartwarming series is heard on radio. In just a moment, the story of Dr. Kildare. But first, your announcer. And now, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Blair General Hospital, one of the great citadels of American medicine. A clump of gray-white buildings planted deep in the heart of New York, the nerve center of medical progress, where great minds and skilled hands wage man's everlasting battle against death and disease. Blair General Hospital, where life begins, where life ends, where life goes on. Did you complete your examination, Dr. Kildare? Yes, I did, Dr. Gillespie. And what was your diagnosis? Glaucoma. Yeah, well. Yeah. An operation's his only hope, and I'm afraid that's a rather thin hope. He'd only come to us a little sooner. Yeah, I know, I know. But that's so often the way. I couldn't begin to tell you how many times I've said in my secret heart, you know, well, why didn't you come a little sooner? Just a little sooner. So much more might have been done. Mm. Is his wife still waiting? Yeah. Oh, I'd better tell her then. We... No, no point in putting it off. When you come in, Mrs. Simmons? Doctor, I... I think I must have aged 50 years while I've been waiting. My hair hasn't turned white, has it? No, of course not. Sit down. Uh, Mrs. Simmons, as you know, I asked Dr. Kildare to examine your husband so that I'd have another opinion beside my own on this case. And also because if an operation was necessary, I felt he was the best one to do it. You understand this is merely a recommendation. You're at liberty to pick, and you should pick, any surgeon that you have confidence in. Then you have to operate. Oh, I'm afraid so. Mr. Simmons, your husband is suffering from an eye disease called glaucoma. Oh, Dr. Gillespie, I wanted him to come long ago, but he wouldn't listen to me. Mm. I, he seemed to feel that it was a sign of weakness to go to a doctor. Oh, can you, can you save his sight? There's only a very slim chance. We operate to try to establish proper drainage and keep the pressure in the eye permanently low. When are you going to do it? As soon as possible. Going up to your husband's room and tell him now. Well, Mr. Simmons, that's the whole story. All right. Let's get it over with. That's what I hoped you'd say. I, uh... I'll be able to see after this operation, won't I? Oh, I hope so. It's hard to guarantee the results. I'm not going to see. You might as well finish me off in that operating room tomorrow. If I'm not going to see, I don't want to live. Drake Simmons. He's resting. Operation? Well, it was a surgical success, so far as we can tell. Hmm. 
It'll be a week before the bandages come off, and we'll know whether he's going to see again. Yeah, I know, I know. We're going to have a problem with him if his sight isn't restored. Dr. Gillespie, I have an idea. How would you like to go across town and have a Spanish dinner with me? Have a what? Spanish dinner. Why should I want to have a Spanish dinner tonight? Oh, I don't know. Thought I detected a slight Latin glint in your eye. Ah, Kildare, you've been working too hard. You better go to bed. <laughs> Latin glint in my eye. Of all that Tom fool notion. Now, what have you got against Spanish rice? Well, I haven't got anything against Spanish rice. Well, then come along and have some. Come along and I'll uh, introduce you to a very lovely lady. Ah, 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 ah. So that's what's behind this Spanish rice. It certainly is. Maria Espinosa, mm. one of the most charming, gracious women you'd ever want to meet. And can she cook like an angel? My angels can't cook. <laughs> You'll change that statement after you meet Maria. Yeah. I'm convinced she has second sight, too. One touch of your hand and she knows all about you. Kill there. You're too sensible to be taken in by a line like that. Well, you come along and see. And if you don't lose your heart to Maria yourself, I miss my guess. Yeah. There she is, over at that corner table. Maria! Maria! How are you this evening? Oh. Oh. How nice of you to come tonight. Chula, hello, boy. How are you? I have been thinking of you all day. You have not been here in so long. <laughs> Maria, I want you to meet my friend, Dr. Leonard Gillespie. I'm very happy to meet you, Dr. Gillespie. And I like your hand clasp. I hope you come often. But then, of course, I like all Jimmy's friends. <laughs> Here, sit down, won't you? Thank you, thank you. <laughs> That's a very handsome dog you have, Madam Espinosa. Yes, and Chula is a perfect gentleman. He's my eyes, my guardian, and my best love friend. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you are wondering how long I have been blind, Dr. Gillespie. Yes, I would. Well, how did you know? I don't know. I just knew. I have been blind for almost 30 years. M Maria and her husband were in an accident years ago. Maria came out of it permanently blind. My husband died. Oh, I'm sorry. No, you need not be. One learns how to bear pain, doctor. Pain of the heart as well as of the body. My wounds have long since healed, as indeed they must. If one is to go on living, I had two small sons. They had to be supported. There was little time for grief. Maria took her insurance money to open this restaurant. She did the cooking herself. You did the cooking yourself? Yes. I knew that my blindness was an obstacle that had to be overcome. I took a training course, and when I finished that, I spent months practicing cooking. So many steps to the cupboard. So many steps to the stove. It was trial and error, but I learned. And now I have my restaurant. It makes me a good living. My sons are grown. And now I have cooks in the kitchen to do the cooking for me. Well, I've seen Maria rush out to the kitchen and tell a cook there was something wrong with the sauce just from the way it smelled clear out here. Well, when a person loses one sense, all the others become much more perceptive. <laughs> Well, tell me, Dr. Kildare, about the hospital. Mm -hmm. Did you operate today? Oh, oh yes, I did. And was the operation on someone's side? Uh, yes. Yeah, how on earth did you happen to ask that? Oh, intuition. Uh, you're a remarkable woman. Yeah, I don't think so. The man I operated on today doesn't want to live. His sight is gone. Yes, that is the natural reaction. I imagine it is the first thought of almost everyone who realizes they're going to be blind. Well, this man may not lose his sight, you know. We, we, we won't know for a week. Well, I'm confident that if he does, you too will find a way to help him. Well, now, I know you're both hungry. How about the asparagus? 
Spanish pot roast. He's a particularly good tonight. That's for me. Oh, sounds wonderful. Yeah, I get it for you myself. I won't be long. <laughs> what an amazing woman. Isn't she wonderful? Yes, too bad more of us don't have her courage and her wisdom. It takes a lot of guts to turn a liability into an asset. Mm. You know, whenever I leave Maria, I leave with a new awareness of life. Mm. The sky has a new brightness, the air has a new vitality, the world has a brand new beauty. Yeah. I get a thrill from just the smell of earth and bakery shops and stores, even exhaust pipes. Because there's a picture in those smells when you close your eyes. I get a thrill out of touching things, too. Out of textures, tweed and velvet. Pages of a book, the softness of someone's hand. Maria's blind, but she sees far more of life than most of us who walk around with her eyes open. And if if Drake Simmons isn't to see again, that's what we must teach him. Oh, I hope that operation is a success. Yeah. A week before we'll know anything. One whole everlasting week. <laughs> Doctor? Yes, Mr. Simmons. And Dr. Gillespie's with me. Yeah, yeah. How do you feel, Mr. Simmons? I don't think I ever fully realized what my eyes meant to me till this week. Yeah. I had to ask when it was day, when it was night. People have come and gone, nurses, interns, laboratory technicians. I, I haven't even known what they look like. I'm alone. So completely alone. In a dark, black world. Now, oh, Mr. Simmons, we must all try to condition ourselves to the blows that life gives. <laughs> that sounds like preaching. I, I don't mean it that way. No, 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 it isn't. It isn't. It's common sense. Are you trying to tell me that I'm not going to see again? Uh -uh. No, no, only that we don't know. Even after we remove these bandages today, we can't be completely certain of the results for a while. Well, take them off. Take them off. Let's find out. We'll take them off right now. Uh, what's it like out today? It's going to rain. Now sit still, Mr. Simmons, while Dr. Kildare works on those bandages. What time is it? Mm, it's about ten in the morning. Any any interesting news in the headlines? Oh, nothing particular. Oh. Huh. Well, there we are. Now, open your eyes, Mr. Simmons. can't see very much. Can you see anything? I... I can see... sort of a thin film of light. Mm. I can see a film of light. Uh, mm. Dr. Kilder, that, that means something, doesn't it? Doesn't it mean something? Yes, yes, of course it does. That's, that's encouraging. Is it? Oh, of course it is. Uh, now, Mr. Simmons, you're going to have to remain for the time being in a fairly darkened room until your eyes get stronger. I think you'll be more comfortable at home. As a matter of fact, there's no need to keep you here. Your wife can do more for you than the hospital can just now. Well, I, I must be getting better if you let me go home. <laughs> Your wife is down the hall, and I want to talk to her. I'd like you to try and take a nap now, if you will. Oh, yes, of course I will. And when I wake up, I'll, I'll probably see more light. Yeah, yeah, it sometimes happens that way. We'll be back to see you later in the afternoon. Thanks, both of you. Never mind the thanks. Just get some rest. His spirits picked up a little when we got that bandage up. Say, do you think he's, he's going to get his sight back? Uh, the chance of that didn't look too good when he got that bandage off, did it? No, no, no. He should have had more vision than he had. But, but there's hope, of course, that, that the light he saw meant that his sight was returning. Now here's the waiting room. Oh, okay. Almost walk right past him. Oh, I, I thought you'd never come. How is Drake? Well, there's still hope, of course, but... Uh, I see. Then the operation wasn't a success. Well, Dr. Kildare removed the pressure, all right, but your husband doesn't see as much as he should. Well, well, then we, we've got to prepare for the future. Hmm. It's, it's funny, but this is the first time in all our married life that I've really felt that Drake actually needed me. 
I shall do my best not to fail him. Oh, we know you will. May I see him? Well, he's resting now. This was quite a lot of excitement for him. But you can see him this evening if you like. And tomorrow I want to make arrangements for him to go home. I'll have everything ready for him. Oh, one or the other of us will try to stop by your house every day or so because... We can't give your husband back his eyesight, then somehow between us we've got to give him vision. We return to the story of Dr. Kildare in just a moment. Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Dorothy! Dorothy! Yes, darling, yes! Is it night what or is it day? Is it night or day? Oh, it's, it's night, darling. You have the light on? Why, why, no. I, I thought you were sleeping. <laughs> You're right. It is a night or day. It's broad daylight night. I can't see a thing. I can't see. I can't see. Why are you so quiet, Kildare? You've been staring out of that window almost an hour without saying a word. I was looking at the city. Modern miracle, symmetrically and beautifully laid out on Manhattan Island. How wonderful to be able to see it. Gildare, you've fallen into a very dangerous frame of mind. What do you mean? Well, subconsciously, you're sympathizing so much with your patients, you, you, you may not even be able to help them. Never thought of that. You may be right. Drake Simmons doesn't need any sympathy. He has plenty of that for himself. He's got to stop thinking of the things he doesn't have and then look for the things that he has. And you've got to do the same thing. That is, if you, if you want to help him, you've got to show Drake Simmons that there are things to live for. Hello? Yeah. Oh, yes, Mrs. Simmons. What? Oh, no. What? Just a minute. Just a minute. Let me put Dr. Kildare on. Kildare. Simmons has taken poison. What? Ammonia. He found a bottle in the bathroom. Give me the phone. Hello, Mrs. Simmons. Mrs. Simmons, give your husband olive oil in large quantities of water. We'll be right over. How is he? He's going to be all right. It didn't get very much of the ammonia down. We've neutralized it with hydrochloric acid. That combined with the olive oil you gave him will do the trick. What? I was so frightened. Now, just sit down, sit down. He, he'd worked himself up into a terrible state. He kept saying that he couldn't even see a film of light. And I, I tried to talk to him and calm him down. Then after a while, he was quiet. I thought he was all right. I was only out of the room for a few minutes when I heard, when I heard him cry out. Oh, try not to think about it. It's all over. He's going to be all right. I know. I, I'll be all right in a moment. It's, it's just that I... He, he is completely blind now, isn't he? Yes. But does this mean permanently? I'm afraid it does. Dr. Kildare, can you force a man to live who wants to die? No. But you can try to make him want to live. Will you come in, Jimmy? Hmm. He's 
he's rational enough now. I think the sedative is beginning to take effect. Well, Mr. Simmons, you gave us quite a scare. Why'd you bring me back? That was my job. I'm a doctor and you're my patient. Now, look here. I want to talk to you. I'm not interested in the sermon. Well, you ought to be. You need one. I'm not paying you to give me sermons. I'm paying you to get me well. That's quite true. But don't you see, you're not going to get well as long as your mental attitude is wrong. When I say get well, I mean seeing again, Doctor. You can't make me see again, then you can't do a thing for me. I can try to show you how to live without sight, if you'll let me. I'm not interested in living without sight. Uh, Jimmy, I think Mr. Simmons should try to rest for a while, don't you? Yes, I do. Will you stay here with him? There's a call I want to make. I'll stay right here. I don't want you. No, I won't bother you, Mr. Simmons. You just go up to sleep. You you won't even know I'm here. I don't want to live. I don't want to live. Maria, I need your help. The man you operate on is not going to see again. No, no, he isn't. Tried to kill himself yesterday, and before that, I tried to talk to him in every way I knew. Tried to tell him your philosophy, to point out all the things he has to live for. I argued, pleaded, begged. Don't think he heard a word I said. You will take me to him? If you will come. You know I will. I've never felt more helpless or more like a failure in my no, life. No, don't say that, Jimmy. This goes beyond medicine. Remember the old saying about the blind leading the blind? Let me get my coat. We go at once. Mr. Simmons, I want you to meet a very good friend, Maria Espinosa. How do you do? I'm very happy to meet you, Mr. Simmons. And may I present my friend, Chula? Chula? Uh, speak to the gentleman. Oh, oh. <laughs> where, where is he? Put out your hand. He comes to you. Go on, Chula. That's right. Well, he's a big dog. Chula is my eyes. Oh. You, you're... Yes, I'm blind. You're blind, too. Tell me. I, I know you too. will excuse me for a few minutes. I, I have to call the hospital. How are they getting on? I think they'll end up good friends. Maria will know what to say, I'm sure of it. Oh, she's a lovely woman. I'm very grateful to her for coming. And to you for bringing her, Dr. Kilton. He seemed interested in Chula. Oh, Drake has always loved dogs. Uh, perhaps Maria can win where I failed. Certainly hope she can. Jimmy, if Maria wins, then that's your success, too, because a great part of being a good doctor is knowing more medicine to give the patient. Well, I think, Dr. Gillespie, we ought to leave Drake with Maria and go back to the hospital. Mm, patient's in good hands, all right. I'm confident of that. Do you know, I, I have hope now. For the first time since Drake became ill. Mr. Simmons, I'm happy to say I find you in excellent physical condition. And I'm equally happy to say I find you the same. I feel splendid, thank you. Do you know what Drake's doing now? Maria has taught him to cook, and he's fixed us some of the most wonderful Spanish dinners you'd ever want to eat. <laughs> I couldn't even boil water without <laughs> burning it before I lost my sight. <laughs> do you know what we're planning to do? No, what? Well, we're thinking of opening a school for blind children. <laughs> There's so much to be done in that field, and, and with Drake and Maria to teach and some other people we've met, we might really accomplish something. Oh, I think that's a splendid idea. So do I. Let us know if there's anything we can do to help. We certainly will. Goodbye, Dr. Kildare. Dr. Gillespie. Thanks again for everything. Oh, goodbye. Goodbye. Uh, you did a fine job there, Jimmy. Oh, I didn't do a thing. I almost failed completely. Uh, thank heaven for the Marias of this world. We can all learn from them. Ah, we can indeed, Dr. Kildare. We can indeed. In 
in just a moment, we will return to the story of Dr. Kildare. Once again, the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers as Dr. Kildare and Lionel Barrymore as Dr. Gillespie. Maria, do you think there might be just a snippet more pot roast in the kitchen? Of course there is. Manuel, bring Dr. Gillespie more pot roast. (laughs) Tell me, Maria, I've always meant to ask, what did you say to Mr. Simmons that day? Oh... I told him he was a very foolish man to carry on like such a small child. I told him how much more fortunate he was than I, that he still had his wife, a lovely home, security, and that now he would discover a new world with things in it he never knew existed. I told him he would see things with his soul, that he had never seen with his eyes. I know that inside I was praying that the right words would come to me, and somehow they did. (laughs) Well, Drake Simmons is certainly a changed man. He certainly is fortunate that we knew you and were able to take you to him. Careful, now you give me the big head with all this company. (laughs) (laughs) No, a big head never goes with a big heart. Thanks, Maria, for what you taught Drake Simmons about courage of what you taught me about life. You have just heard the story of Dr. Kildare, starring Lou Ayers and Lionel Barrymore. This program was written by Gene Holloway and directed by William P. Russo. Original music was composed and conducted by Walter Schumann. Supporting cast included Isabel Jewell, Bill Johnstone, and Peggy Weber. Dick Joy speaking.